It's time for This Week in Radio Tech. Hello, I'm Kirk Harnack. Glad to be with you live at NAB. This is our 78th program. Thanks to Leo, Eileen, and the whole gang, Burke and Hilton, and everyone else. Alex, too, and Tony for making the show possible. Live from NAB. Oh, and... Uh, and uh, Lin Fu as well. Thank you very much. Oh, All yes. right, we're here with we're here with a great panel of folks on this week in Radio Tech. Our show is brought to you by Netflix. And uh, to my left and your right, is it your? Yeah, your right. My right, your left. On the right hand side of your radio <laughs> dial, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's Chris Tobin, the best dressed man and engineer in radio. Hi, Chris. Well, one of many, one of many. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the NAB broadcast. This is a good one. We'll get our Actually, it's a great show. We'll, we'll get I'll our disclaimers that. out of the way. I am paid by the folks at Telos Omni and Axios, so if I say anything nice about them, you know, it just it comes natural. And you, I'm employed for... by the folks at CBS Broadcast. Um, we don't make anything other than content you enjoy to watch and listen to. So, that's it for that. That's my disclosure. Also joining us on our panel, if we can get a, get a wide shot, we have from Radio Magazine, longtime friend, fabulous engineer, and the man with a terrific voice is Chris Shearer. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Kirk. How are you? And uh, former uh, uh, Chief Hoo-Ha of the SBE for a while, wasn't uh, you? I was uh, president of the SBE from 2005 to 2007. All right. Glad to have you on the on the panel. Please feel welcome to jump in any time and okay. ask Grill, Grill, our other panelists. Gladly. <laughs> also with us, uh, somebody who's uh, uh, familiar to you viewers of the Tort Show, it's Scott Feibush. Hello, Scott. Hello there. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. You've got uh, something cool to show us a little bit later on in the program. I do indeed. All right. And you've, have you had some recent adventures you can uh, tell us about? Oh, plenty of them. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And and also Radio for Radio across the pond. <laughs> for, oh, really? Yes. You've been across the pond? Ireland. Do they have towers across the pond? They do. All right. They do. I, I bet your camera snapped some of those. It did. Also with us is uh, one of the guys on the invention team of MP3, and <laughs> and, and now we've got him. It's Tony Timmett. Hi, Tony. Uh, good morning, Kirk. You've been uh, a, a guest. Thank you. We're glad to have you here. You've been a guest on the show before. Uh, yes, I have been. And I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be able to update us on uh, the, some latest trends in yes. uh, audio coding. <clears throat> I, I will be the one that is being grilled, I think. You're in the hot seat over there, right? <laughs> also, a little bit later on in the program, we're going to bring you uh, another technical guest, and that is Leif Clayson. Now, if you're into audio processing, you will know you know this name, Leif Clayson. He's developed uh, such softwares as MPX Tool, and uh, he's got this incredible uh, audio declipper, which makes really bad sounding uh, overproduced CDs actually sound good. So we're going to check in with Leif in, uh, in just a few minutes. Hey, let's turn our attention to Chris Shearer. Chris, you have been on the floor of the NAB here mm -hmm. uh, a couple of days now. Uh, you you want to clarify by on the floor. Walking, <laughs> <laughs> not, not in a prone position or anything. You know, I no. haven't kept up with it the whole time, so maybe you'll have to clarify. <laughs> it's Wednesday. By I, this I point, was upright. Yes, I was vertical. Uh, and yes, I was walking around and, and, and scoping things out. And your question might be... Are, well, are you spending most of your time in, in, the, in the radio hall since you're in the radio biz? Right. Concentration in what is known as the radio hall, which is sort of a, a boundless, a bound boundaryless uh, zone that uh -huh. extends a little farther but yeah that's most of my concentration is there correct so um, in in terms of buzz whether it's in the equipment realm or in the content realm or in the political realm what what is happening what's what's buzz on the floor about um, well the, the 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 first buzz wor working on the magazine side of course I work very closely with the manufacturers as well as the readers the engineers in this case um, on the manufacturing side sort of what you've probably observed as well from your side, um, sort of the general attitude on the show is positive. I'm hearing uh, a lot of the exhibitors very pleased with how things look from their standpoint. Um, attendance figures were released, I believe, yesterday, 92,000 and change. Yes. Uh, close to 92.5, I think, if I recall, um, which is about on par with last year, mm -hmm. if I remember as well, up from two years ago. Um, so in general, the, the spirit on the, 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 the feeling on the floor seems good and positive from their standpoint. And of course, when the manufacturers are happy, I get a lot less grief. <laughs> so I'm happy with that too. Yeah. Uh, from the attendee side, I, I certainly have a lot of contacts um, from the, the engineering community. Um, they also seem to be happy with what they're seeing. Is there a lot of really stellar brand new technology out there? Not necessarily. Um, but I take that with a grain of salt, not that there's no new innovation of any kind. But as we all know, we've certainly reached a pretty high peak in technological development these days. And what has sort of been the theme over the last several years of the show is, while there are some incremental changes here and there, a lot of times it's 
uh, taking an existing idea and improving on it, making it better, maybe taking two ideas, putting them together. Um, some of the more unique things, at least on the radio side, is that radio is starting to realize that this thing called video is maybe something practical and maybe it's something we can use. Not obviously to send over the air because slow scan TV is just <laughs> crap TV, frankly. Yeah, you know, try, trying passed. to make radio with pictures is just Move crap TV, period. Move slowly to demonstrate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but there have been a, a couple of things from radio manuf typical radio manufacturers that embrace the video side. Um, the term IP is boundlessly everywhere. I mean, you can't get away from something that doesn't have some sort of IP relation to it. Obviously, IP audio being the more obvious connection, not just control via SNMP or something like that. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the quick nutshell of what I would say would be sort of the, the, the top tier items as you look across the floor and what you see. Cool. Thanks for that update. That's just awesome. Um, uh, yeah, you were speaking about IP and, and, mm -hmm. and radio with pictures. Uh, maybe, maybe now's a good time to do a little show and tell. You're welcome sure. for the segue. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, I do work at, uh, a radio, at one of several radio stations that do video. We do 14 hours of video at WFAN. And on, our, on, our, uh, on previous editions of this show, you've said something about that your radio stations produce more video than the CBS television station in New York. Yes, yes, because most of the TV programming you see is already on tape, if you will, or so coming out of a file server. Right. Live newscasts are live, that's short sure. hours. But yeah, we're about 13 or 14 hours of live video on, on two radio programs in New York, and uh, it's expanding. And we obviously, actually, I'm not getting this live video on my car dashboard. Not yet, but, but I think it's on, about it's on a the year web out. streams, yeah? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow, yeah, wow. Yeah, so you have you have video people doing video switching in lower thirds? Yes. Not, oh, yes. un, not unlike what they're doing here. We have full television, if you will, lighting in, in the studios, and we actually have an on-site uh, uh, makeup person. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's wow. pretty funny. Is that is wow. that your second job, the, the <laughs> on-site makeup? Uh, uh, no, thank goodness. Oh, it's I, not you. I, okay, I good. Stayed away from the changing light bulbs, trash cans, and makeup. So all people. that mortician school is for naught no. at the end. Okay. <laughs> if there's a toilet that needs unplugging, though, you're no, right. not. Oh, me. he's right on that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. So but yeah, uh, yeah, no, it's good stuff. Is, is this a good time to do a little show and tell? Sure, if you like. Okay. All right. Uh, tell us what you got here. All right. Uh, two products that cross over from television into the radio world, or vice versa. Uh, as Chris pointed out, IP is a big thing, not intellectual property, but uh, internet protocol. And uh, IP video is now wireless, as we've seen on several other products on the show floor. But this one is actually pretty cool. It's one of two devices that are in, in the show. Uh, this one is actually sh uh, shipping. It's a working model. There's another product, I'll talk about that in a second, that ships, I think, fourth quarter, as I was told by the manufacturer. So I'll just be fair to both. Uh, this is called the News Shark. It's from a company called DSIRF. And let me see if I get this right for you, sorry. And what it is is a uh, portable transmitter for video. It does HD, it'll do SD as well, uh, HD, SDI. And this top little nub you see here is a wideband antenna. It'll hmm. do Wi-Fi frequencies and cellular, so for <coughs> LTE and 3G. And it attaches to a camera using a standard uh, one of two, the uh, either V-Lock or in this case an Anton Bauer gold plug. So you attach it to the camera. Uh, I'm sorry, battery goes here, camera goes here. And then the unit talks to a receiving uh, device in a rack back at your studios or control room. And you can shoot live video, walk around. Uh, it's about, uh, let's see, 300 kilobits a second uh, data rate uh, on this current model with the 3G. Uh, looking at their booth here at the show, it was actually quite passable. So if you're doing spot news, spot sports, or a quick interview, stand up, this works very well. And what's nice about it, it negotiates talking to any cellular network you connected with. Hmm. If you choose cellular not to be the, if you go without cellular, you can do Wi-Fi. So if you have a Wi-Fi hotspot that you're managing, this will talk to that. So again, you can control what's going on much better than a cellular company. And it's all self-contained. And what's really another cool feature, has an internal battery, lithium battery. Uh. And the purpose for that, uh, I'm told by the manufacturer, is so that when you take the unit off the camera to change out the battery pack, because your battery may be running low for the camera side, uh. this stays connected. Okay. And it will run up to about six hours on the internal battery. So if you happen to have a situation changing at your location, you can plop this on the table and then do your other stuff, come back, stay connected, and then reconnect your video, which is on the bottom. You have all the video connectors on the bottom. So in, in this case, the, the, all the battery connections that are the, the standard Anton Bauer here are, yes. are passed through. That's correct. Okay, so it's not drawing camera battery. Uh, no, this draws about, I think they said, uh, like 10 watts. Now, is is this useful in some way to a radio broadcaster Absolutely. who's not doing video? Absolutely. Tell me about that. Well, you could uh, do this with spot news. Actually, 
radio stations that are doing video would definitely benefit. If you're not doing uh, video, this helps you because it's a self-contained transmitter that you can plop anywhere where you go. Now granted, the price point on this, I believe, is somewhere in the order of $17,000 for the two pieces. But then again, these days, it's not you know, unreasonable for most radio stations that are doing a lot of stuff that requires outdoor, outside broadcast use. Uh, with stations, uh, radio stations doing video, which are a lot uh, more now than ever, this is ideal. You, know, you can, um, I believe they have all the mounts you can go with if you choose not to use a more professional camera, a high end. You go with a low end camera and you just take the SDI out or convert it and pop it in. Actually, this will do standard video as well. Now, besides this model, uh, you and I together looked at some a box that does something similar. Yes, yesterday. that's the other that's the other manufacturer, mm -hmm. a company called Comrex, mm -hmm. as we all know, Comrex.com for the website. They have a product called LiveShot. I'm told it'll be shipping fourth quarter, so I didn't think it makes sense to show it off because that's probably one pr prototype. Yeah. Uh, but it, it is very it's um, very useful. Also, pass through battery connections, standard mounts, Anton Bauer or V uh, Lock. It also operates in a wireless form uses uh, two connectors, uh, they're XLR4 pins, that extend the USB data out to about this height. Yeah. It's approximately one foot high above the unit. Uh, the reason for that is so that you can allow uh, the RF signal to be above the person's head, as I'm told. Sure. Also, if uh, you want to change out to your personal modems, if you have different types of Wi-Fi stuff, you can easily do that. And also with the flex part, if you're running for with a story <laughs> or at a sporting event, if you happen to hit an obstruction, <laughs> right. Through you know, the it just bends down and comes back and you don't clip off the antenna. Now, now these these boxes, both the Comrex and this DSI, uh, obviously the, the video is encoded, I think it's H264? H264, yes. What about the audio? Do you know how that's coded? The audio, I believe, is uh, AAC. Okay. HE. And this could be a terrific segue over to Mr. Timmet. Hi, Tony. Hello. Hi, Kirk. Tony, you're from Germany. Yes. And you uh, used to he work. Is? <laughs> he used to work for the folks at uh, at Fraunhofer. Yes, this is yeah. true. From 1990 to 1994, I was with this group in Nuremberg, in Germany, and being involved in the wider, you know, area of development for MP3. So, what can you tell us about what's happening in Codex nowadays? I keep hearing these names like HEAAC, HEAAC V2, AAC ELD, or HELD. Kind of tell us about these these iterations of AEC and where things are going. Well, this started uh, right after the development of Layer 3. The next step was a more advanced audio coding, the AAC, Advanced Audio Coding Standard. And uh, it turned out that they had uh, different uh, applications. Uh, one was geared towards more uh, low delay coding. Uh, and this uh, triggered the development of the low delay codex. It's called the AAC LD codex. Um, others were more geared towards uh, really low bitrate uh, applications, and that's where the HE uh, comes in, which does some sort of special uh, encoding of the higher frequencies of the audio signal, so that uh, you can uh, reduce the bandwidth and the bitrate even more. So, there are just different kinds of AAC codecs geared towards applications. So, uh, people might, depending on their equipment, they might choose the the codec that they need for the application. Now how uh, do you choose the codec, the audio codec, um, based upon what the available bit rate? What other factors might factor into? Yeah, th th these are the two things. It's the bit rate that you have available. Mm -hmm. This is the one thing, and uh, the latency you want to have from end to end. So the delay in your audio, ah, but, and this okay. depends, of course, on your on your application. If you have like a communication, a two-way communication application, you want to have a very low delay. If you have a low delay version of a codec and a normal delay version of a codec, um, is, is there, does there tend to be a quality difference? Yes, it's so a trade-off. You have to give it's up a something. Slight trade-off, yes, of course. I see. No, I see. Um, now, what about on the horizon? Do, are you aware of? of I mean, HEAACV2. This is often used not for contribution, but this is often used for distribution to mobile devices. Okay. Uh, because yep. it's such a it's such yep. a great so at, at bit rates of under 50 kilobits per second. Correct. You can have entertainment quality stereo yes. Uh, yes. stereo audio. This is true. Is it is it the case that broadcasters should try to use higher bit rates to, uh, for their content, uh, co you know, for their um, contribution content? I think nowadays 64 kilobits per second is about uh, a really good quality for a stereo. Really? Signal. So using yes. which codec? Using standard AAC. A or AAC? AAC. HE. H -E -A -C. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, in one of the Telos products, we have a codec called AAC ELD. That's a combination of the high efficiency <laughs> and a low delay. Oh, it is. So it tries to get the, the best of both both worlds. Okay. Really. Um, 
yeah, that's the latest and greatest that uh, was developed at FHG in Nuremberg. And um, so we have this in the Zephyr. Yes, this is true. I have to say, we just don't have enough acronyms in this <laughs> stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I agree with you. This is kind of a confusing thing. And I, I, and I experience this, that uh, customers come and they are kind of really overwhelmed by this many, many different names that are out in the field. But you know, on the other hand, the engineers are trying to do their best thing. To and, and, and not to really simplify, I mean, a lot of them are, are, well, a lot of them are the same foundation, they're related, they're similar in many ways, right. some more so than others. And, and these specific differences can really be minute sometimes, as far as, I mean, really having to get under the hood to really realize the difference, short of a couple of top line specs. So, I mean, it just further adds to some of the confusion sometimes, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. you may be right there. So what would happen, for example, if I tried to use a codec like AAC, at a v not the LD or ELD or HEL, nothing like that, but if I tried to use plain AAC at a very low bit rate, what is going to be my compromise there? If I tried to use it at 32 kilobits or 64 it kilobits? It will just sound not good. <laughs> it tries to uh, encode the entire spectrum, the 20 kilohertz audio frequency spectrum, um, and squeeze it into the available bits, which is just too few and uh, then it will just sound bad. You will have artifacts, typical artifacts from encoding, and you don't want that, for sure. So you go to a compromise, you code the higher frequencies in a different way, you save bits there, but overall you get a better experience. What do you see coming up in the future? Do you have any insight into codecs even beyond what we're seeing now? Um, I'm not sure, I, I have the feeling that it's a kind of, at, at a certain end, you know, at, if you go down to like say eight kilobit per second for a, for an audio stream, I I think there's not much to do anymore at this point. There may be other types of codecs that are go more geared towards um, applications, maybe uh, smaller frames or even frame less codecs, so where you have more sample accurate possibilities. Tell me, I, I hear this word about frames when we're talking sometimes about yeah. transmitting coded data. What does that mean? Well, it means that the encoder just takes a piece of audio, typically like a 1,024 samples, mm -hmm. sampled at 48 kilohertz, for example, and encodes this chunk of audio into a frame. So you end up with some cryptic data representing this is, is audio. Is this frame standalone, or does it depend on a previous frame or the next frame? Usually, it depends on the previous and next frame. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. What and there's a, another word that I've heard about, and that is a, a codec that can do error concealment. So if, if you lose a packet of, of IP, you don't necessarily lose audio for that duration. This is because these frames are overlapping in a way in the in the uh, in the time domain. Okay. So if you lose a frame, then you get some audio from the previous frame or from the next frame and it will fill the gap, so you won't hear this so much. But of course, if you lose more than one frame, then eventually uh, it will simply go away, the audio. Now, uh, it seems like a couple of years ago, I was at the AES in New York, and Fraunhofer was showing a hybrid uh, codec operation, because codecs, it seems, can be optimized for human voice or for music, but the same codec doesn't necessarily work so well for, for, for the, the other one. And they were showing a, a technology that actually contained co two codecs in the encode and two in the decode, and they would switch extremely quickly between them depending on the that moment of, of audio. Did you did you see, you didn't see this? No, I didn't yeah, see skip, this. Yeah, uh, skip piece. I, I mean, I know, me this, yeah. okay, I, I know that, of course, these codecs, they are complicated pieces of software and you have to gear them and tweak them. There are many parameters there that influence the quality. And uh, you have different applications in audio. You have voice, you have music, you have all sorts of different kinds of materials. You have classic music, you have rock music. Um, and there are ways to actually gear these codecs towards these different applications. But really, do you want this? Uh, if you have just one codec geared to voice, if you give it music, then it sounds bad. You would give the user a lot of flexibility on the one hand, but you would confuse him, e confuse him even more. You know, yeah. you have a set of knobs, and it's just not the way to go. Wow. So the goal has always been to actually have a codec that is gives you good quality for all possible thinkable applications. And I know at that time when I was at FHG, uh, most of the time we just had music, different kinds of music, and listened to it very carefully. Uh, whether it sounds good, and then you know, had a, a set of parameters for the audio codec, 
uh, and try it with some other music. So um, to figure out that this is, uh, or to make sure that this is um, a good quality for all types of audio. Hey, I got one last question for you. We, I mean, I'm an English speaker, right? You speak English and German. Do codecs, with codecs developed in, in Germany, is there any accounting for how other languages might sound through a codec, especially a tonal language like Thai or other e Asian languages? There was, yeah, there was uh, at least thinking about this issue. Um, I'm not sure this went anywhere really um, because it's, uh, you know, you, you just rep replicate the spectrum of the audio ah. and um, you make sure that you don't hear things that are, um, or you, during the encoding process, uh, the information that is not audible to the human ear is being removed, so you save bits and can compress the audio. That's the obvious thing you okay. do. But what the human ear can, the human ear cannot hear. This is depending on you know our bio biology, and it doesn't depend on really on the language that ah, you're speaking. So. Okay. Okay. Tony, thank you very much for being with us. Thank I you. appreciate your expertise, and uh, th th I thank you for being a colleague. It's mm -hmm. good to work with you. Thank you, Kirk. All right, take care. Hey, we're going to take a, uh, a moment now and hear from the folks at uh, Netflix. They're the sponsor of today's show. And also, oh, I, I want to make sure and mention uh, New Tech. Thanks very much to New Tech for letting us use their new TriCaster 850, the HD TriCaster. I think this is the TriCaster going into the new Twit Studios in Petaluma, California. So uh, thank them very much uh, at, uh, at New Tech. You can follow them, by the way, on Twitter. You can follow New Tech on Twitter. So Netflix, hey, uh, this episode of uh, This Week in Radio Tech is brought to you by Netflix. You can watch thousands of TV episodes and movies streamed to your PC, your Mac, uh, or your television, if it's an internet-connected television, instantly. Now, if you're watching this show, if you're a Twit Network viewer, the chances are pretty good you already have Netflix, right? You probably don't need to hear this, but you know what you can do? You can get a Netflix subscription for a loved one, for a friend, for maybe somebody who you're tired of running into at the DVD store. You, you can give away a Netflix subscription to them. It's inexpensive, as, as low as about $8 a month. I subscribe to the one DVD at a time plan. I think Leo has five DVDs. I don't know how you keep up with five DVDs. We have a trouble keeping up with one DVD. Um, so anyway, uh, it's, um, go to Netflix.com, check it out. You're going to enjoy Netflix if you're not now. Everybody I talk to that has Netflix just says they love it. And I believe the, the new Star Trek uh, movie is, uh, is coming out um, also on Netflix. How do we use Netflix at my house? We have an iPad, an iPad 1. We set it up in front of my little seven-month-old boy, Michael. And we, we bring up episodes of Caillou, which I never knew existed until we started searching the children's section of Netflix. And uh, it's, it's just great. Keeps them entertained for hours at a time. So check it out. Netflix, Netflix.com. You will like it. And uh, get it for someone you love if you like. All right. We're back on This Week in Radio Tech. And uh, Tony has left us and joining us way to my radio right uh, is um, Leif Clayson. Hello, Leif. Uh, hi, Kirk. Hi. How's it going? It's going very well. Glad you're with us. Uh, we're going we're gonna to talk to you here in just a minute. But I want to let the audience know that Leif is in the house. And you've got some <laughs> audio samples to tell us and some re really cool processing uh, things to tell us about, right? I definitely do. All right, you hang on. I'm going to turn our attention now to the guy in the middle, Scott hey. Feibusch. Hello, Scott. Good morning. That's a good-looking tie. Thank you. I've got one almost like that. Should have worn it today. <laughs> I uh, bought this when I was doing TV, too. So. Did you? Yes. So, Scott, tell me, first of all, for those who haven't uh, seen or heard Scott on the Twerk podcast, tell us a little bit about Scott Feibusch. I wear about four or five different hats at the moment. Uh, added a couple of different radio industry trade publications. Uh, the Radio Journal, which is a national radio engineering publication, so kind of, uh, <laughs> we, we, we get along. And the Northeast Radio Watch, which covers what's happening in radio, not just engineering, but also programming and, and the business side of things in the northeastern U.S. and the eastern Canada. And I do Tower Site of the Week and the Tower Site Calendar, which comes out every year in the fall and features uh, broadcast tower sites from across the U.S., Canada, and occasionally elsewhere, too. I'm looking at, uh, at your tower site of the week on fibush.com, F-Y-B-U-S-H.com, fibush.com, and it looks like you're in Indianapolis. I was. I'm actually running about a year, year and a half behind in posting some of this. So Indianapolis was the summer of 2009. Uh, some of what's coming up in the, uh, in the near future, there's some more Los Angeles yet to come. Was in San Francisco about a year ago visiting some of the uh, famous sites around San oh, Francisco. Yeah. So there's some big AMs 
in San Francisco coming. And I just got back. If I, if I have no idea what time it is, it's because I was just in Ireland for a week right before NAB. Ah. <laughs> so I've been cycling through time zones here. Trying now, to. Let's talk about I, I've. Very fortunate, uh, Andy Linton, who has also been a guest on the show, has yes. taken me to a couple of tower sites in Ireland. Uh, tell me about what you saw there. Did not actually get a chance to meet up with Andy. We were trying to plan out a, a get-together, but he did set me up with a visit to the Irish National Radio Studios, hmm. RTE in Dublin. It is a small national broadcaster. If you're accustomed to the sorts of things that the BBC does or the CBC with their massive broadcast center in Toronto, this is small. They only run, they run four national radio networks. Only two of them are out of Dublin. And so it's, you know, it's about the size maybe of a typical public radio station in a larger market in the U.S. Uh, but they do have a large orchestral studio. They're very big on that in Europe wow. with the studios for the so orchestra. In, in, you know, I always think of you and towers, but you explore the whole facility. I do studios too. I do. Okay. Um, but I did get out to some towers. And it's interesting because... I think since you were there, you got to see a couple of the medium wave sites there. In the right in the middle of Ireland, there's a site yes. that I think is now totally turned off. Athlone. In fact, it was turned yeah, it was turned off when I went there. Okay, it was it was off because yeah. I think it was 09 that they that they turned them off. They are off medium wave entirely at least for now in Ireland. They had two high power sites right in the middle of the country, the one that you saw at Athlone, another one about 30 miles down the road called Tullamore. Uh, and they had a couple of lower power AM relays in uh, in Dublin and in Cork and I think there was one maybe in Galway. They've shut those off. The country is entirely FM for the moment, mm -hmm. except for one long wave transmitter, uh, just a little bit uh, northwest of Dublin. This high power? This is high power. It's either 100 or 500 kilowatts. I'm not sure what they're what they're running there at the moment. And that started out as a commercial station. They built that in the mid to late 80s to try to hit the UK mm -hmm. uh, across the Irish Sea. It was called Atlantic 252, and they were a top 40 rocker before you had those on the radio. Uh, in England, and then once England got top 40 radio commercially on FM, the need for that diminished. They tried to do commercial sports for a few years, and, and now RTE, the national broadcaster, uh, has taken it over. So that's the last AM site on the air for now. But that Athlone site that you saw is apparently coming back, a religious broadcaster is going to be leasing it, so it uh, will be coming back. And I did get there. I got some nice pictures of it from the outside. You know, one of the frustrating things about about doing as as the guy who kind of produces this show, and I, I don't claim to do a very good job of it, is we are so overbooked on this hour. <laughs> so let's let's get right to the prize you've got in front of you. Uh, Scott produces a, a calendar. You do this once a year, right? I do. It comes out every <laughs> year in the fall. Yeah. Uh, features photos of tower sites from across, as I say, the U.S., Canada, and there will be Ireland. Okay. Next year, we All will right. we will get at least one Ireland photo in there. Uh, this year features uh, Mount Beacon on the front here, uh, above Poughkeepsie, New York. Actually, above uh, Beacon, New York. Let's see. This is uh, it's WMT. This is a quiz. This is this is KWMT. <laughs> rather, <laughs> there are. I have people who uh, who are in the business who buy the calendar, don't look at the captions, and we we, really? we play every right. year. Yes. Really. yes, absolutely. To see how many they can figure out uh, without looking at the captions. You, you should have a deal where you just give a, give a URL. Or you have to go online. That would be uh, fun. We could do a little quiz. I'm working caption. on revamping my website. Yeah. It, uh, I, I wrote it myself 11 years ago. It might be due for a little bit of a. Uh, of an upgrade, but I'm starting, I'll tell you, Kirk, I'm starting to get a little worried because you walk around the floor here. I've, I've been doing that uh, as well as Chris has. You sit in the sessions. There's not a lot of talk of AM radio here anymore. You know, I can't, I can't think of anything really in terms of a new AM product. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's on the floor this year. Uh, <laughs> even even the engineering session. Someone I think Lays may have something to Someone say about right Well, a, there was okay. Has a smile. Tra thing. Transmission. Yeah. I, I haven't seen car machines either, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday morning in the engineering conference was devoted to AM radio, and there was a decent crowd in there, mm -hmm. and certainly some fascinating seminars. But I think I may have been the youngest one in the room, and that's scary. Wow, that's wow. really scary. So there is the, the headline I wrote this morning in in, in the radio journal. Uh, was there is a case of platform motion going on here, this AM platform, as these stations are transitioning their content from AM to FM in a lot of bigger markets with news and talk. It, uh, you start wondering. Scott, you can hang around for the full hour, right? I'd be happy to. All right, we're going we're to move on to Leif, who's only here for about the next 15 minutes or so. Hi, Leif, how are you? Uh, hi, uh, hi, Kirk. I'm doing great. It's been a great show so far. You know, I've heard your name for years, and I didn't know who this Leif Clayson guy was. Uh, <laughs> so t tell the audience a little bit about yourself, those the few who haven't heard about Leif Clayson and some of the <laughs> software and audio processing things you've been doing. All right. Well, um, uh, well, I'm originally, um, well, I'm originally Swedish. Um, I lived in Sweden until I was 21. Then I uh, uh, moved to the States 
uh, to work uh, work on audio processing and I lived here for eight years and then now I've lived then I moved to Thailand and now I've lived there for four years and, oh and I'm moving to Holland next so uh, um, yeah you know it's, it's such a small planet and you only live once so why not um, I uh, well uh, I'm an, I'm an audio nut I do uh, audio processing for um, well uh, uh, FM uh, FM AM TV and um, internet streaming and pretty much any other uh, audio uh, and any other broadcast medium we can think of and uh, this year at NAB I finally get to introduce Omnia 9 um, my my latest product this time released through um, uh, well through uh, my friends at uh, Omnia and um, well it's a it's a it's a it's a pretty new uh, well, it's oh an ent entirely new entirely new audio processor and uh, well it has an a, a tremendous list of features. It does FM uh, FM processing, of course. Uh, it does AM. It does separate processing for HD1, HD2, and HD3. Well, the last two are options, but it can do them all in one box. It's th three rack units high. Right now, I'm running it here on my uh, on my laptop, and um, um, it also has built-in internet streaming, uh, a streaming encoder. I figured it made sense because. The uh, I mean it's an audio processor, so it has it, it's got the audio already, um, and it's it's on the network, and it has a CPU with plenty of power to spare, so we can actually do MP3, MP2, AAC plus encoding, and WMA all in the same box. You're uh, I, I want to back up one second. A lot of folks have been talking in the industry about your software called the Breakaway Audio Enhancer, or the Breakaway Broadcast Processor. Give us a real quick couple sentences on that, and then I want to go back to your uh, your your cool declipper there. Uh, absolutely. You know, it's, it's funny. I made so many different products, I almost forgot. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, Breakaway Audio Enhancer, it's a broadcast quality uh, multiband processor. Um, it uh, it uh, levels out the uh, the difference between well uh, loud and quiet masters so that you never have to adjust your volume control, but it's twenty nine ninety five, uh, and it's me it's easy to use so it's meant for home users. Uh, it you know you install it in a couple of clicks and then all of the audio you play from your computer all of a sudden it sounds better and it's and it's even, and um, uh, well it's available from ceaudio.com. Uh, in case, uh, w well, in case you want to try it, there's a f uh, f free 30-day uh, free trial, and then there's uh, there's several products in the Breakaway family. There's um, Breakaway Live, uh, which is for live str uh, for streaming and um, and PA use. Uh, it has the same uh, same multiband processing as well as RTA and speaker controller uh, with de with delay and crossovers. All the features you might need for a P PA system. It's 130, and uh, then there's Breakaway Broadcast Processor. Which uh, well, it's an it's an F uh, it's an FM processor. Or, well, it can also do AM and streaming. Uh, and the unique thing about it is, uh, it has a psychoacoustically distortion masking clipper, which means that uh, well, ev everyone knows uh, everyone knows that you st you have to be louder than the other guy, right? Right. Uh, which right. yeah, which is which is kind of a shame, and we'll we'll get back to that later. But at least uh, much in the same way an MP3 encoder works, um, which is psychoacoustically figure out what parts a human hears and what parts we do not and then throw away the parts we don't hear to save bits. I do the same thing in my clipper except I hide the distortion in the portions where we won't hear it. Wow. Uh, that wow. way you can actually okay. clip something like glockenspiel and have it uh, without having it sound over li sound like you um, uh, like you uh, ran backed over it with your car. I notice on this uh, on Softpedia, there's a, a developer area for Leif Clayson. There, you have a program called Silence Player. I don't want to spend more than one sentence on Silence Player. <laughs> is, it, is this a joke? What 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 Silence Player? Oh uh, yeah, I had this I had these crappy USB sound cards way back. Uh, I mean, this was over ten years ago. Um, I mean. Yeah, I, I don't think I spent more than a few dollars each because that's pretty much all I could afford back then. And um, uh, well, I used to, I had this radio studio set up because I used to do it, uh, used to do some internet broadcasting on on the Swedish radio internet radio station called Radio Seven. And uh, I used this for jingle playback. The problem was if nothing was playing through these cards, then uh, um, if you start if you start a jingle, uh, you'd miss the first second while the card power is up. Oh, so okay. then I created okay. Silence okay. Player, which <laughs> which 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 plays silence through up to four sound cards at a time. Okay. <laughs> really good All feature. Right. Worked for Philip Glass, right? Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's let's circle back around to the the computer you have in front of you, and the camera was getting that. Th I, I, I guess you want to point out this declipper. Part oh, of the yes. problem that, that broadcasters have is that 
you know, record producers, music producers, have gotten this notion that they need to be loud on their CDs or on their downloadable uh, songs. And, uh, and, and back when we had a lot of jukeboxes, that people started to want to be loud on the jukebox. So they started pro- mastering records and, uh, with, uh, with clipping. Uh, so they could try to be louder. And this is a rather unsophisticated way of, of getting loud. Go and ahead. where do you think they got this idea? <laughs> well, yes. Exactly. I, I mean, that's the thing. It, 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 it is our fault in the radio industry for doing the same thing. So, uh, so um, uh, really, because we, yeah, we, we started it, and then they started mastering their CDs so that they sound like they've, uh, sound like they've been played on the radio right out of the box. Right, but I got. Isn't there a bit of a difference in sophistication between how yes. the record oh, people are doing it? Oh yes, there is. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, w- w- and even the simplest uh, digital FM processors today, such as such as our competitors. I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they they don't have psychoacoustics, but at least they oversample their clippers and yeah. try to mask yeah. the distortion a little bit. Yeah. Uh, whereas uh, w- when they do it to CD mastering, we know that same effect you get if you have a cheap boombox and you turn it up too loud, so the audio starts coming apart. Yeah, that's because yeah. the well, once the amplifier has nowhere uh, has no more to give, um, uh, uh, the signal the signal is going to get stuck at the rails, yeah. and whatever, w- for example, whatever was riding on top of the bass, such as the voice, will get muted because there's just once you're at the once you're at maximum, there's nowhere else to go. That's called clipping. So and it sounds so horrible. Broadcast processors really don't want to start working on audio that's already clipped. No. That's tough to do. Uh, it really is because um, uh, because when it goes through crossovers, that clipped edge, that flat line and actually if I could if we can look at my laptop a little bit here. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> nice one. Okay, I'm going to try to point. It's kind of hard because it's in front of me, but you see this? You see those uh, those flat edges there? Uh, the song I'm playing right now is Voices by Madonna. It's okay. uh, one of the, uh, uh, and uh, uh, that album and one more, I think, are tied for most poorly mastered album of all time. So, in, so sometimes, in the of sometimes I'm seeing that waveform get get flat topped yeah. on the top and on the bottom, right? Exactly, and th- that that's clipping. That's the same thing your uh, your amplifier will do if you turn it up too loud. But here they put this on the CD already, so even if you turn it down, you're still going to hear that incredible distortion. And uh, uh, normally, when this goes through. Uh, um, a, sound, a radio sound processor. It, ha- it has crossovers and, and all sorts of non-phase linear things, which means that that flat edge can actually. Uh, it's not going to be flat anymore. It's going to be tilted, and it could end up <laughs> a- any, <laughs> anywhere. Right. Uh, a- a- anyway, it could even go right through the center line, and then we process it, and then we clip it again, which is why radio sounds like it does today. So the next frame to the right of what you were showing on your screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, the uh, the Omnia Nine uh, for the f- uh, for the first time in history. Uh, well, uh, I have. W- it includes a feature I call undo, and it's a de clipper. Uh, I've uh, well, I've made the entire processor, uh, including user interface, except for the de clipper, which is made by my friend Hans von Sutphen, a uh, Dutch guy. And he he calls his algorithm perfect de clipper. And um, you know what? I, he he claims that he can prove mathematically that it is a perfect de clipper, and really? uh, I, I tend to believe him from how, from what it does. Because it actually those those clipped off edges, it actually restores them uh, from uh, obviously from the part of the audio uh, that center part of the waveform that wasn't wow. clipped, and it actually removes the distortion. So and on the right hand frame, okay, in, in the middle of the screen, the one you pointed to earlier, that's the that's the input, that's the clipped. Though it moves straight to the right, and this is after the declipper. Now it's not just that that is turned up more. We see peaks that are occurring. Exactly. There. The, it, it is not at all turned up more. You s- uh, I, it well, it, it may not be obvious in the video, it but just, you uh, see. It's not obvious at all now. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, it just... Screen, uh, uh, there you go. Ah, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's obvious there. Look at the clipping on the left side and the lack of clipping on the right side. Exactly. And you see, you see those thin lines above and below? That's, uh, that's when my processor detects where it was clipped and puts the declipping threshold there uh, so that the declipper may start working. So all those, uh, uh, so uh, uh, those top and bottom edges, um, all of a sudden they come back, and it's not it's not that it's just kind of extrapolating and drawing a line because if uh, there are declippers that do that and they don't work very well, no, this one really rebuilds the frequency content, um, the uh, well, not exactly like it was from the beginning, but good enough that it actually removes the distortion. So I know some program directors who would ask after I take out the clipping on the left of the screen from the original recording. And now the right-hand side has more dynamics or has a more a better sound. Can I go now and process it and make it louder for yes. me to be competitive? Yes, yes, clip yes, it. Yes, We're yes, going yes, yes. to clip it now, right? Oh, 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 like oh yeah, no, no, uh, yeah, no. We'll, we'll get, we'll get there. The um, okay. uh, so and uh, so after it's been declipped and the distortion's been removed, 
Um, well, it sounds a lot better, but that's not enough because they don't just clip. They also compress it to death before they clip. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, so, well, I know some program directors would say, and what's wrong with that, right? <laughs> <laughs> the well, meter's well, moving. Well, There's well, something well, wrong. Yeah, right. Yeah. The meter's supposed to stand still. Well, well, well yeah. If, if, if a little is good, then a lot must be better, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah, but no, no well, uh, yeah, yeah, let me continue. Uh, after that, it goes into the undo algorithm. It is a psychoacoustically controlled unprocessor. Uh, d designed by yours truly. Um, it's, a, it's a density detector which detects how smashed the input is and if it's devoid of short-term dynamics and punch uh, it actually it's, it, it controls uh, the ratio of each band of a five band expander so it actually nice. brings it actually brings the drums uh, drums and all those sounds that were basically missing before it brings them back. Excellent. Uh, and um, then it goes through my regular multiband processor um, uh, which is <coughs> well, which is currently ru currently running in six bands. Yeah, if you see the meet, um, for, for those of you watching the video, uh, on the on the top left, uh, you see uh, the meters for um, all, all the meters for the unprocessor, and then on the top right, you see the uh, meters for the uh, for the processor, which is more of a traditional broadcast processor. It's a six band, uh, well, wide band ADC, six band multi band. But the thing is, um, well, my uh, my broadcast processor. It's um, uh, although it levels out the uh, the level and the frequency balance, it doesn't smash the peaks. Uh, it actually leaves it leaves those pretty much intact, so that you still get punch. Because because uh, yes, uh, program directors want to be loud, of course, but they also want punch. Absolutely. And and Absolutely. punch comes from having having some impacts be louder than the rest. Right. Um, so it does that, and after that, it goes uh, it goes into my psychoacoustic the distortion masking composite embedder and this is different from the one in breakaway because um, well uh, I don't do the I don't do any clipping in the left and right in the Omnia 9 instead I, I apply the pre-emphasis curve and then I stereo code it and then I clip it to about 15 dB's depth <laughs> actually with my with the uh, with the composite embedder um, the composite embedder is also psychoacoustic distortion masking, so it can do this and still sound cleaner than any other processor on the market today. And um, uh, it also actually means that I can put about 140% of worth of audio into 100% of modulation. This is amazing to watch the mod monitor read 140. Well, 127 the highest it'll read, but exactly. 127 on the left and right, and the and the modulation is 100. Exactly. Uh, year, years ago, I asked uh, I asked your your new colleague Frank Foti. I said, Frank, how can we make a processor that uh, does 140 percent modulation, but the mod monitor only reads 100? <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, it's uh, yeah that that's actually that's actually what I've done. Uh, 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 well, uh, uh, and anyone in broadcasting who's listening is probably familiar with the Bellar Wizard, excellent piece of gear, and they also have that uh, the Bellar Stereo Monitor, which mm -hmm. reads the left and right channel. Uh, it's funny because when I first try, uh, developed this new clipper and ran it through through a Bellar Wizard, um, the, yeah, modulation says 100, and uh, left and right are say 127, and they do not move. And I called my friend over, uh, well, my good friend Tim Carroll of Linear Acoustic, who's actually developed the hardware for this Omnia 9. Uh, thank you so much for that, because yeah, it, it, it couldn't it couldn't have happened otherwise. Um, and I called him over, and, and his jaw kind of dropped, and he was like, dude, you broke the Bellar. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> hey, Excellent. Leif, uh, we are about out of time right now. I want to point folks toward, um, you have some videos on YouTube that are instructive about uh, about your, your processing. I Well, not yet, but not I will. Yet. Oh, I'm seeing them here. I'm seeing the links here. Anyway. You are? Yeah. Wow. Omnia 9 FM <laughs> processor <laughs> better than you thought. Man, by Leif Clayson. I'm like, man, these guys are fast. If you if you go to YouTube and and just search for Leif's name, Leif L E I F Clayson C L A E S S O N, uh, and in my show notes on thisweekinradiotech.com, I'll put the links to these in there. But there's a four parts. It wouldn't all fit. It's like you know, 40 minutes worth of instruction here, right? It, it's 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 a it's a talk you did somewhere. Oh, oh, those, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, no, 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 don't, uh, no, no, don't, no, don't watch those. Oh. E e pretty, pretty much everything that could go wrong went wrong during the presentation. <laughs> okay. But, 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 okay. but then again, once I got everything working, it stole the show anyway. So, so it, it well, well, now that all's, and all's well that ends well. Okay. Now that Kirk okay. has so successfully pimped those bad links. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, 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 uh, but, but you know what though? And, and if I may, the, yeah, well, yeah, so, uh, well, so, um, 
Well, uh, I mean, we're in America and talk is cheap. Um, so I actually have... <laughs> <laughs> Ow! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, no offense. So the thing is, I actually have uh, a couple of audio clips, um, which, which oh, I like to play. You can play them right now, right? Um, yes, and, okay. and, they're, and they're, they're nice and short. Um, okay. And uh, the first clip I would like to play is, well, the, the, other C uh, the other CD that is a candidate for most poorly mastered CD of all time, Metallica, Death Magnetic. I mean, this is one of those where people, uh, where people are signing petitions for them to remaster the thing. Okay, so listen carefully. We're going to play the first cut yeah, now. Yeah, the first right? cut is the original CD with no further okay. processing. All right. Right, yeah, guys okay. in suits marching. That's what I <laughs> <was doing. laughs> so the thing is, yeah, one might say this is what it's supposed to sound like, but uh, well, did anyone notice the toms, the drums, everything sounded yeah. like a cheap boombox turned yeah. up to a lot. Mm -hmm. That was the CD. Okay. And when this goes through a traditional broadcast processor, and um, uh, uh, it, it sounds it, it sounds even worse. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, this traditional processor is actually one of the most uh, one uh, probably the best-selling audio processor of all time. It's used on almost every station in uh, in the states and and all over the world. So this is what this sound this song would sound like on the air right now. Pretty smash. Not pretty. Do you hear any drums? I don't. You can tell they're there, but they're not they're not yeah, they're, they're okay. noise generators. And yeah. finally... Got a dash of multi today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 can you t try to t t tune that in a little bit? I don't think you caught the right. station correctly. Yeah. Okay, now and the then and then finally, the uh, Omnia 9. And this is the FM output, uh, d decoded, to, decoded to stereo. So this is what a station would sound like if they had the Omnia 9 playing this, this very CD. Okay. Yeah, I hear the drums. Sure. They're, 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 they're much I, I hear them too. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where'd they come from? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, it, it, it really works. <laughs> and, and I'm hearing this on this, you know, cheap little, and I can hear it on, I can hear the difference with this. I heard the difference yesterday on the uh, laptop, <laughs> on, 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 on the laptop, but on the big speakers, on the big uh, focus uh, speakers that you have, or the uh, any any decent speakers, you're yeah. gonna really hear a difference. Oh, oh, ab yeah. absolutely. Or in your car, or or, or in your clock radio. Really, it's yeah. that big. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, I, I, and I'm as amazed as anyone that it's possible to bring de to bring detail out of a CD that's mastered like that. Leif, what uh, website should, would you like people to go to to find out about you? Well, uh, <laughs> there, well, there's a few. Well, you can start at, at ceaudio.com. All right. Uh, but then there's also omniaaudio.com. Uh, th that's where you can go to find out more information about this product. Uh, so if you, you know, just look at um, product FM processors, Omnia 9 is right in there. Okay. All right. ceaudio.com. Pretty site. Check it out there. Thanks a lot for being with us, Leif. Thanks so much, Kurt. Appreciate it very much. All right. Let's turn our attention back to... Uh, Chris Tobin, you've got one other thing you're going to One more product on the uh, world of IP and video and audio and radio stations that could actually take advantage of things. Uh huh. This product is called the IQUSNET. Oh, I should turn it the other way. It is IQUSNET. A IQUSNET. All right. They believe it's Spanish for I can see your network. It's a marketing thing. I'm All not right. going to get into marketing with these folks. But in any case, uh, it's a video product. I actually had, I was at the booth the other day, and a radio consultant, engineering consultant came by who was doing some talk, talks to some uh, networks and has actually seen an application for this. So, let me see, make sure I got it right. Good. So you have two screens. It takes uh, HD, SDI video in. We'll put out on packets uh, SD video at the moment. HD is coming in about a month. And what you can do at the one megabit per second, you can get uh, what looks like actually a pretty passable video over in, uh, one megabit. This okay. was this unit at their booth. This is the MusicCamUSA.com, the booth in the uh, central hall. They actually have a unit on a T1 shared within the within the building, <laughs> one megabits per second with a camera in Homedale, New Jersey, and you'd be hard pressed to believe that it's one megabit a second, H.264, yeah. MPEG-4, an AAC HE audio, and it looks really good. Macro blocking is almost not even existent. Uh, two units. You can do two cameras in. You can switch it, soft panel, and also it has the ability. Battery operation, V brick, uh, sorry, not V brick, uh, V lock or uh, Anton Bauer. And that gives you a portability. It's about 35 watt consumption, so with a proper size battery, you can easily get two hours of freedom. 
And also on the top here are USB ports. So you can take an LTE modem. Unfortunately, they're not open. I don't have to cover off. Four USB ports you can mux together or bond uh, LTE modems if you choose, or 3G. Again, you can do up to 2 megabits per second. H.264 looks really good. And it's all software driven. This box can actually be used to replace a, a, a truck, an ENG truck. So how might a radio broadcaster use this? Uh -huh. Again, putting the video from the remote site yes. on their web stream. Actually, I talked to two folks, uh, one gentleman who uh, owns several radio stations on the West Coast, like the idea of being able to take this unit to a club mm -hmm. where they do a many broadcasts, and currently they're trying to do a ad hoc uh, video with various methods. I will just leave it at that as he put it to me. <laughs> he sees this as a way of going to a club, putting the video, two camera shots, so you could have the DJ doing their things, pan the crowd, so have two cameras. Audio goes back, it's AAC audio, so it's easily broadcast on the FM. And it, this unit has two channels of audio, so while he's doing video and audio on one channel, the other channel can be dedicated just to the music stuff if he chooses. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, he loved it. Yeah. He thought this was a great idea. He could send out, and he found that it was so simple, as you can see, it closes up real easy, that he, he knows his folks could use it. It's the jocks, whatever, could easily work it. But probably out of, you know, half hour worth of training. How, how much would a station have to pay to um, get that I'm told, well, this is a TV product, so you're going to expect the price to be high. No, 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 the uh, two pieces involved, I believe, is $50,000. Oh, can you turn around? Oh, I'm side. sorry. Yeah. Yes. About 50 grand? 50 grand for two pieces, yes. That's Liz Price. These days, Liz Price is usually way far off. From we can hire 10 disc jockeys for two years for wow. 50 grand. You know what? If you're doing it right, you'd be surprised you can make your money back in short order. <laughs> when it comes to video, everybody loves to see things. Now, look, you're a big market guy. You're in market number uno. I'm in market number 208 yes. or less. Yeah. Well, I mean, not hey, national, but WTOP Cleveland. market number nine just yeah. boasted a $60 million revenue stream uh, this past Good. year. So you know what? Don't give me market size. It's going to be an issue. <laughs> All right. If you have the content that people want to hear or yeah. see, yeah. you will make money with it. That's a good if you don't have the vision to see that or use it, then you know what? Move on. It's good argument. Hot dogs really taste great for you know. $2 vision. It's a little interplay on the product. I exactly. See. Yeah. No. Yeah. Remember, it's, it's, it's about broadcasting, whether it be radio, TV, or internet, it's broadcasting, it's content. Yeah. Is your content yeah. perishable? Then therefore it's going to have value. If it's not perishable, like most music stations, you're going to have a fight on your hands. Do, uh, do radio broadcasters really need to start thinking about video? Absolutely. They should have started about four years ago. Oh. In some cases, like this network, maybe seven. But I'm telling you, this is, this is the start. These two products are an evolutionary change. I'm going to call them game changers. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yes, there's a price involved, but you know what? That's the cost of doing business. Yeah. Yeah. If you can't do it, move on. New world. It's scary for me. <laughs> it's true. As the owner of some ti t tiny ra t90 radio stations. You can find a way. Yeah. We, we do have a webcam in front of our, our country music jock. On, it's on Ustream. When, it, when, you, when he can get it to work. When he can, oh, I see. When he can get it to work. Yeah. But yeah. do you capitalize on that? Do you have an audience feedback? Does no. anybody talk about no. it? Need to do, do you do play that. to the audience? Need to do that. See? Yeah. Yeah. I need to follow your lead. I'm telling you, you, you can do it. You, you got to think out of the box. Oh, I'll use the term that most salespeople tell me all the time: non-traditional revenue thinking. Aha. Uh -huh. Re revenue let's... in that phrase makes it possible. Remember this, and this is Jerry Seinfeld, Larry David. Their show, as you all know, I don't have to tell you about it, is successful because they fought to keep the content as is. Those who were distributing and had some ownership to it wanted to change the script. They said, no, the money will follow. I'm telling you, yeah. get your content in order, the money will follow. If you try to chase the money without the content, have a good day and your quarterly reports will really stink. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that's <laughs> the way to go. You're so right. True words. All right. Hey, on our panel, we've, uh, we've, uh, Leif has left the building and who's here but award-winning Clear Channel engineer and uh, ham radio operator extraordinaire, Charlie Wooten. Hi, Charlie. Hello, Kirk. Glad you're here. Is your mic on? Ah, uh, oh, there it is. I just okay. need to get up on it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leif, Leif was eating it, so you, you might want to get this close to it. Yeah, I noticed they were up here moving his microphone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, Charlie, okay, I want to spend the, the, the rest of our show with you three panelists and, and talk about what you're seeing on the show floor. I didn't get to ask Scott that question yet, but let, let's run to Charlie first. We'll come back to Scott about uh, what you're seeing that, that's exciting to you. What, well, you've there? already talked about one of the things, and that's that, that um, Telos 9. Op oh, Omnia, the Omnia, Omnia, Omnia 9. 9. Yeah. yeah, great product. I was over watching. He gave me the full run through on that yesterday. Okay. Um, something that is weird, but at the same time is neat. Uh, small item, a direct replacement LED tower light for your top beacon that goes, that screws right into the socket. Nothing needed. 
Sweet. You don't have to change the beacon or the lens uh, or any of that. Not the or anything, just the lamp itself, yeah, basically. It okay. actually has the bayonet. Uh, oh, that uh, is sweet. So I, if I'm the tower oh, guy climbing great. the tower to put this new LED replacement, is, am I thinking, well, this is the last time I'm climbing this tower well, they, for 10 years. They, <laughs> the, the beauty of it is, as you know, in a beacon, there are two 620-watt light bulbs. You only need one of these, and it draws 15 watts. Gee, mm. me! And puts out enough light to, oh. for the two 620 watt light bulbs. Can you can you reveal the name of this company? I uh, haven't heard it OTL, yet. OTL, okay. OTL, or something like that. I've I've got a in my briefcase. I have a, a data sheet on it, but uh, it looks like a, ba- a single bat wing is what it looks like off of a bat wing TV antenna hmm. because it's got a, a V shape uh, uh, heat sink that goes down, and then in the center you have your LEDs, and then there's another set of heat sinks that come down like this. And there's a small, very small, straightforward power supply, 110 volts in, and it powers the uh, the uh, the LEDs. Wow! 15 watts consumption, and, and it's bright enough to qualify. And it qualifies. It has FAA uh, certification. And now we used. To, I always thought the two beacons. We're talking about the, the one at the top, not the one obstruction the, lights on the side. No, sides, no the, the one on the big, the big one, the, top. the one that's about three feet I tall. I thought we had two bulbs in there because for, for just redundancy. But well, it may be for redundancy, but or it may be for brightness. I'm not sure what the standard is with the FAA, but yeah. this will replace both bulbs. Okay. And it, it's a red LED, so it doesn't matter whether you have a clear lens or a red lens on your uh, beacon. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, it'll be red light. Okay. So the, the red light passes right through the red lens, no problem. No problem. You know, I always thought it was really great. In the, in the, F, in, in the rules, you had to mount your, your beacon fixture in a, a way that it was visible from any normal normal angle of approach to you know an aircraft yeah. approaching the tower. Right. And I'm, I'm a pilot, and I'm thinking, now, at what angle do I normally approach a tower? <laughs> Hopefully none. A wide, yes. <laughs> well, now you, you know you have to have beacons on both sides of the tower on mid on a mid beacon. On a midpoint, mid yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, it's, so so that you have the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, Chris. Uh, so, I was going to say, is it ITL? OTL. 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 Okay. OTL. All right. Coming up as OTL. So, it, it, anything else cool to report on? Um, that, that was pretty good. A couple of trans. Harris has a new FM transmitter that I really like. Um, the one that'll go up to 20 kW right now, and I think they're working on something bigger. Uh, the new FM, I forget what the Verzia or something like that. Uh, of course, the other other transmitter manufacturers have their boxes tuned up and ready. Uh, but I was interested in that one, and uh, there was even some, even some talk about uh, some uh, liquid cooled FM transmitters. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not the, necessarily the one that Continental is, but some other manufacturers. Probably I shouldn't say who, but they're talking about liquid cool. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I walked by somebody's booth and I, I saw this, and I what as an FM. I'm not a TV engineer, yeah. so I'm not used to liquid cooling. I'm, I'm worried about springing a leak. Water and high voltage. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. if you think about it, you're talking about uh, you're talking about the solid state devices probably running at nominally 50 volts. You know, a lot of current, but very low voltage. So, still water. Still, seems like a I, yeah. Yeah. I hear that sound. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to babysit a I used to babysit a GE water cooled TV transmitter. Uh, nothing like a good Klystron for anything. Had a pair of 6251s <laughs> in it that. Whenever one of those hose connections decided to uh, take off, it was a mess to get back on the air. But Charlie, you take care of a number of clear channel stations in Panama City, Florida. Right. So, what are, are you guys shopping for? Something? Are you guys looking for technologies or some replacements? Look, I was I was looking at, at some of the streaming stuff. Uh, of course, a lot of that comes from from corporate. What we do in that regard in the new media, but uh, we uh, we try to uh, to keep ahead as much as we can. I'm I'm in the I'm in the market to replace one transmitter in, in the next year or so. I've got I've got one transmitter that's uh, it's pretty old. It's about 25 years old and it, it needs replacing. It's it's been a very reliable transmitter, but it's funny these very reliable transmitters. That, there, there comes a point where all of a sudden things start going away, and that's where I'm having a problem with this one. It's time to get rid of it. So I'm looking at transmitters in the 30 kW range for FM. Anything else on the show floor exciting to you? Um, not, I mean, a, a lot of things, new things that uh, I wish I could have in my market <laughs> size. But you know, here I, I'm in. I'm in a, I think we're two, two twenty nine. So. Oh yeah. So yeah. you know, uh, a lot of things can't be justified. Uh, I want to talk and mention for a second. I believe that the Twit Network is going to be covering the uh, ham radio reception. Right. You're calling it Bob Hiles' party. Is it Bob Hiles' party? Or I is believe it, it is. Actually, yeah, actually, Bob's, Bob uh, is, has sponsored it for the last 
yeah. several years. Several years. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. Officially, it's right the amateur and, radio and, reception, but. And there's some yeah. talk of Bob Heil having a podcast on the Twit Network that'll be totally ham radio focused. Wow. That would be so. I, I think they'll be see, uh, searching you out uh, uh, for, for this. Any, any any other hams that are on yeah. here? Yeah. Ch- uh, uh, see if you can hook up with uh, Leo at the ham radio reception this evening. Okay. And uh, I'm yeah, sure that's you know. one of the reasons that I stay until Wednesday. Ah, yeah. Is to go yeah. to the ham radio reception. Yeah. I, otherwise, I would f- probably fly back early. So, Scott, uh, I want to get back around to you. What are you seeing on the show floor? What are you hearing? What's the buzz for you? You know what caught my eye, product-wise? ERI has aluminum high-power FM transmission line. Thanks for taking one off my list. <laughs> yeah. Somebody somebody was going to get it at some point. Yeah, you think about it. High-power FM, traditionally, your connection between your transmitter on the ground and your antenna up in the air has been heavy copper piping. Well, as they say, copper is not getting any less expensive. And people are wanting to steal it more and more. Oh, yes. Absolutely. And aluminum has been used. Your TV waveguide has used aluminum. If you go to the old high-power AM sites, the horizontal transmission line going out to the tower oftentimes was aluminum. So ERI now has developed its, its aluminum hard line. It's got a copper core to it. Uh, they say it's about 25% lighter, so you have less tower load, and costs about half as much. Wow. And you can take a whole section of it and carry it with one person aluminum transmission line didn't they have aluminum transmission line back around the end of world war ii haven't i seen the aluminum line before it's been tried yeah before. it's been tried okay okay i think one of the issues and this probably would affect somebody like you charlie is uh salt salt yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. nothing of course, like cable them. companies have and used aluminum too. oh that's true Obviously. yeah for cable distribution sorry yeah, for years yeah, yeah we have we being on the on the coast i know the cable companies for years were fighting uh Aluminum oxide. I mean, just their connectors where they where, where they go into their amps and their taps would just, would just disintegrate. Chris, yes. Pick hits. Yes. This is tell tell us about the pick hits award. Okay. We're, we we got to wrap it up in a couple of minutes. Tell us what's going on there, and uh, you, you're going to be able to disclose on the show all the pick hit award winners, right? Uh, considering they haven't been selected yet. <laughs> I guess not. Oh, darn. <laughs> if, I if I could do that, I'd be in an entirely different field. Hoping we'd get a scoop on this. <laughs> yes, um, yes. Well, the Pick Hits created in 1985. Uh, they are a, a recognition of new technology at the NAB show. Mm-hmm. Uh, basic rules, it has to be new at an NAB, never shown before. So essentially, if it was unveiled the day after NAB 2010, it's eligible now. Uh, okay. Or at least previously not shown on the on the, the show floor. Right. Uh, we have a panel of ten radio engineers who are est- established, uh, ranging from some small market, large market guys, station level, uh, VP engineering level. They go about the floor independently and anonymously. In fact, I'm the only one who even knows who's on the panel. I'm and do what they normally do. They go about the floor looking for new technology, and then we all assemble this afternoon, Wednesday afternoon, in a secret location, a bar. Uh, Actually, no. We, we, we stay on the grounds. <laughs> there is water served. Um, mm. uh, and they then submit their choices of what they found. And that group comes up with a list of 15 new products from the show. Mm-hmm. Of course, sometimes it's tough because sometimes there are 20, 25 products that really could be worthy, but we have to narrow it down. Then uh, we'll announce those results. They'll be posted on radiomagonline.com probably this evening uh, or as soon as I can get online and, and post those results as well. So that's kind of a sampling of the pickets. And like I said, started in 1985, so uh, we're kind of proud that they're the, the oldest and original technology recognition from the NAB show. Good deal. Looking forward to finding out who the winners are. Uh, as am I. <laughs> okay, all right. Hey, we got to wrap it up. Thanks very much to our panelists. First of all, Chris Tobin, appreciate you being here. You're welcome. Best dressed engineer in radio. I enjoy it. It's a great show. Continue walking around. Stay vertical as you do it. I just have one question. <laughs> yes, sir. Charlie, before you had Tony and Leif, do you have any international experience living overseas or something? Uh, quite a bit. All right. We kept the tradition going okay. in the hot seat over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wor- I worked, uh, worked in Eastern Europe after the fall of colon- communism. Built 68 yeah, radio stations wow. over there. That's what yeah. you want to hear. Yeah. Well, good deal. Guys, our show has been brought to you this week in Radio Tech. has been brought to you by Netflix today. Watch as many movies as you want anytime you want. So check it out at Netflix.com. We appreciate their support of the Twit Network. And also, I want to mention uh, thanks to New Tech 
for letting us use their TriCaster 850 HD switcher. It's going to be a part of the Twit family coming up very soon. Hey, if you want more information about This Week in Radio Tech, download the, sh the shows. Go to thisweekinradiotech.com. There we have show notes. You can add your own show notes if you want to uh, to the show. And, oh, I'm on this camera, aren't I? Hi. <laughs> Need the tally lights. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> you know, a guy like me needs tally lights. Otherwise, I look confused. What's that flashing thing? <laughs> tally lights would make no difference. You can, also, you can also download the uh, podcast This Week in Radio Tech on iTunes. You can subscribe to it right there. There's also an RSS feed button that I think works most of the time on the website, thisweekinradiotech.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks to my panelists. Sure appreciate you guys being here. Thanks for taking the time. And we'll see you next week on This Week in Radio Tech. Bye-bye. That's all the bandwidth we can pill for this week. Another tort is propagated, and all the transmitters and audio equipment live happily ever after, thanks to the handsome engineer and his kind, benevolent care. We'll be back next week. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. This week in Radio Tech. Subscribe to iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Search for This Week in Radio Tech in the iTunes Store. Soliciting is strictly encouraged. If you like today's show, tell a friend. If you didn't like it, we were never here. Kirk Hartnack's wardrobe provided by the Salvation Army and the Red Cross Disaster Relief Services. Hair and makeup provided by Penny Lope Garcia Hernandez Weinberg. He's unique, wouldn't you say? I just want to get it over with. This ends this transmission. Tango, whiskey, India, Romeo, tango. Signing off. Okay. <laughs>